It's time now for our Drive Safe campaign and Chairman of the Roads and Transport, Transport Committee in Parliament, Kennedy Osei has described as unacceptable the needless deaths on the country's roads. Over 800 people have died through road accidents, making it, making it the number one killer in the country. The committee is today meeting with transport operators in the country to understand their concerns and to agree on a workable solution going forward. Opening the meeting, Mr. Osei said the government has every intention to end the menace. I have to say that it has been a fruitful day. Uh, the discussions have been very important. Honorable, thank you. I, I just want to uh, uh, suggest that out of this meeting, some of us will go back and would want to write officially to you and then on this matter how do we address it yeah that's all thank you so it, you write to the chairman of the parliamentary select committee on roads and transport that's all that's all you have to you, you bring it here you put it in my pgo or bring it to my office yes mm, okay so i think we have all raise uh, very germane issues, very important ones. But I'm happy that all of us sitting here agree in principle that the mandatory towing is something that can also help in minimizing the carnages on our road. Am I, am I lying? But your, your problem, your issue is how it should be implemented, or even how the deduction should be made. You, if I, I got you right, you made two proposals. Either one through insurance, or one through the DVL. The vehicle income tax issue, it cannot happen. It's a specific tax on the car, so it cannot be, government cannot, unless you want it to be increased. So, that one is was introduced as a tax that had been introduced specifically for something. And the law had been passed. They can't say that we are taking some. On the insurance part, that would have been the best way. So you know how things are done in this country. We have different, different insurance companies, private insurance companies. It's not that government is going to change them or bring all the money that is collected from these people at the pool. That is why government says that. Whether you are private, you are commercial, you are whatever. Every year, you renew your roadworthy certificate. So government wants to have control of those funds so that it can make sure that it can be applied properly. If insurance will not be better, if it is 20 cities you want to pay at DVLA, maybe when you go to the insurance, it will not be 20 cities. It will be higher. So we should put the insurance aspect you should put it behind us and deal look at the road where the one the renewer how much you are prepared to pay that can save lives on our road that is the most important i'm happy that all of us here and coming from you the operators in the sector have agreed that in principle you accept and you want government to bring back that uh, mandate to it now but now you want us to engage in more commentary how it will be implemented and the deduction. So we'll put it down. We'll engage the minister. Maybe we'll have another forum after engaging the minister. All of us will meet and uh, we'll see. And I can assure you, I'm happy uh, Mr. Adakabri made a certain profound statement. He said that now, 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 now. The ideal situation like some we're advocating. Yes, it's good. Now we will have about 10 companies providing the towing service. Which of them have the capacity now? Which company have the capacity as it stands now? The are individuals who own these small, small towing, which are even rickety vehicles, old vehicles, not more than one, cannot pull. We are talking about heavy duty, big vehicles on our road. The chairman of the Transport Co uh, Committee in Parliament with the transport uh, operators. Well, leadership of the various drivers' unions equally had their own concerns. 
CTC, we enforce the speed limiters. Our buses, you cannot drive beyond, beyond certain, certain uh, speed limit. And that is what is helping. Then the training, we train the drivers. Yearly we do, we do two, 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 two types of trainings. We have it for our, our drivers. I think that uh, st as stakeholders, we should try and then enforce and encourage training of our drivers yearly. If not once a year, I mean twice a year, at least once a year, you should do it. Now the, the issue of the removal of vehicles on the road, I think in the step, there was a stakeholder conference in 2017. The issue, I think, in that conference, I think in Takurade, if I my memory serves me right, was that it appeared the whole thing was mortgaged to one person, one company. The conference said that they should, they should decentralize. But most people were uh, arguing that they should decentralize. Instead of giving it to one individual or one company to manage, they could decentralize it, they could get several other companies to come on board. Okay, because expensive. One thing, you know, that I think can be done is to have rumble strips. First on the side, one in the middle, one on the other side. So that any time you are veering, it makes noise. I'm talking about the ones that are cut into the road, instead of the ones that... So that once you get off the road, once you're going right, it makes noise, it alerts you. You're going into someone's lane, lane it makes noise, it alerts you. And I think that can help a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. My name is Godfrey, the General Secretary for GPRTU. Uh, first of all, I would want to uh, appreciate this very effort for inviting us to this meeting. I would want to say, suggest that your last submission shows that the meeting today is narrowed down to the, to the new uh, reintroduction of the new uh, towing fee. But I think if that was the agenda, I think a road safety could have been extended with the to be here today. Uh, I would want to say that road safety have tried all several interventions with policies, but the key problem that is facing road safety has been that monitoring and salvation of those new laws they bring. The monitoring and how to actually enforce those laws they bring. Let me mention a few for you to get to my point. You see, with data collection, they have mentioned about, about 800 deaths through road accidents within the first quarter. But they have not been able to tell you as to whether out of those accidents, how many of them fall as a result of uh, overspeeding, and then some of them which are just fall within the agenda for today's uh, meeting whether as a result of some of the untold vehicles that led to those accidents. I think uh, they should be urged to do more in terms of getting us more inside about the data collection that they do. This opportunity, drivers don't want to pay money, car owners. But if it is built as either on uh, roof safety or insurance, but you shall pay. But if you exempt it from insurance, if I'm paying 10 CDs on insurance, and you use two CDs on it, I won't care, but if you say pay 10 CDs, pay 2 CDs, people won't do that. So I will please you do that. Uh, it is very good. I have to tell the insurance committee, insurance companies, if accidents comes down, their work will be more... Yeah, they are drivers uh, under so much stress, and out of the stress, uh, a lot happens when drivers may become impatient. Education is very education is very key. Education is very key to the extent that if we do not have dual courage, if we do not have even semi dual courage, can we educate ourselves as to how to share what we have now? Because if Drivers are educated as to how we share the little that we have. It appears we do not know how to share. We don't have it. We don't have dual courage, but we have the single courage way. 
how do we share? I think uh, a participant from SCC made a point about driver education. If in the training room we are taught how to share, at least that will be a starting point. Then we can go further to talk about certain areas that are dangerous, that every, say, 10 kilometers or 10 miles, having stayed behind slow-moving vehicles, there should be an opportunity for you to safely overtake them. So if, say, every 10 miles, we can make, say, 2-1, where you get to uh, Jaso three lane, you get to uh, uh, Konango three lane, you get to Kufu, uh, 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 small Kofu, they are approach uh, uh, Jaso, there's a, 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 a three lane, where you get the opportunity to overtake uh, slow moving vehicles. We can look at it in the medium term. Then in the long term, we can have a dual carriage. Because it appears we do not have coordination from the transport because every transport operator wants to protect their passengers. That's how the conversation went down in Parliament today. We're hopeful there will be very good news as we go along. Well, many people